So what did you think? Let's rank this film on the K-Jometer. We'll start with uh, Vince. What is your rating of The Wicker Man 2006 on your K-Jometer from zero to 10? 10 being his Oscar worthy performances. <laughs> uh, I, w- I would say like, you know, if we're gonna, if we're gonna say maybe adaptation, leaving Las Vegas, I would put uh, Raising Arizona because it's my favorite Nick Cage movie, but um, <laughs> zero out of 10, where do you put this? I give this one a three. Three. I think, uh, yeah, I got to put it at a three. I mean, it was unintentionally hilarious, <laughs> which I know that he's trying to say was the whole point. It's supposed to be a dark comedy, but his acting, we touched on this briefly, his acting was so all over the place. I mean, you could definitely tell what the early shots were because mm-hmm. he had he was just all over the place. And then yeah. as the movie, as the filming went on, you, you could see that uh, he kind of tightened it up, but... That and then just so, so many just like random things that don't ever have anything, you know, never come back to fulfill anything. Uh, it was just, yeah, I'd have to say a three. <laughs> he, he was for me. like surprisingly just super wooden and just yeah. still mm-hmm. at the beginning. I was going to say at the beginning when he's like talking with the detective, it just seemed like he was literally just reading lines that are put yeah. in front of him when they're just having this exposition dump back and forth. I mean, maybe it he just was. sounds like, <laughs> yeah, it's like a one take, like here, just read this in, in your best you voice. Cause it was like nothing, <laughs> which maybe it was like, they were trying to imply he's sort of just dead inside. Cause he's, you know, too, too out of it from dealing with this dead girl. But, it was yeah. bad. It was. It took me out. It was, it, yeah, <laughs> it was too. My was favorite too moment of the early kind of uh, still Nick Cage was when he popped the pill watching the cowboy movie and then just slumped back into the the couch. Like the look <laughs> on his face where he's just like, oh, and then <laughs> made me laugh really hard. Uh, Nigel, where do you rate this, The Wicker Man, on your cageometer? I put this one as a five, a five, slightly higher than than a three, uh, mainly because I think there were some good some good moments. There's some definitely some memorable moments where he he gives it a hundred and ten percent when he really didn't need to. Like we talked about the how to get burned bit was <laughs> completely like that was all him and the director liked it enough to keep it and it does yeah, you know it. it elevates the scene a little bit. Uh, but there was a lot of moments where he's just like sleepwalking through reading yeah. his lines and. And yep, yep. <laughs> delivering, you know, it's like, and I don't know if that was on him or if it was on the director telling him to do these certain things a certain way and just not <laughs> correcting him <laughs> and, and asking him to give him a better performance. Uh, <laughs> but I would give him more than like a two or a three because there are moments that are more memorable. Um, he gives, perf- there are definitely parts that he elevates the the performance of of delivering certain lines. But there's also a lot of him just, just talking and sleepwalking through lines that are <laughs> yeah. just very bizarre. And I don't I don't know how much of that was him or how much of that was the director not giving him direction or giving him direction to act specifically wooden. Yeah, um, in the uh, in the commentary he said that uh, Nick added a lot to it like that he he had a lot of ideas for what he wanted in each scene. There was apparently I was going like to give whole, him whole section like a whole days worth of shooting that they decided not to do at all where he like he had a big line when he was about to be burned and stuff like that he was going to say and he was like if i was in that moment i wouldn't i wouldn't say anything i'd just be like please don't kill me (laughs) (laughs) which makes a lot of sense you know yeah yeah i was going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say something about a wooden performance in a movie called the wicker man Ah. it's kind of thematic and they were asking him (laughs) to i don't think that was the intent i feel like (laughs) So, you know, maybe some of it is on the performance from the original movie because he was very subdued. The guy who who was we should really say his name, but I'm not going to look it up right now. Um, <laughs> but uh, the guy who was the original uh, protagonist from the 73 version was very like calm and subdued. He was very like uh, he was a grounding force in the movie mm-hmm. because everything else was nuts. And he was <clears throat> like just this uh, symbol of authority, a cop, you know. From the very beginning, he was he was very um, put together. So I thought maybe they were kind of going for that, and that was that uh, played into Nick Cage's performance a little bit. But could be a yeah. Um, he's trying to be an everyman too yeah, much to yeah. the point where he just doesn't have <laughs> a 
a gravitas to his character. He's just there. I think that's the great thing about Nick Cage in, in general is like he can be the zaniest, most out of touch mental case. And he can be a leady man. Like he he mm-hmm. has that range. Mm-hmm. But I think it depends on his mood and how he's feeling about a certain project. So we kind of got somewhere in the middle, kind of in both camps <laughs> at different yeah. times. Mm-hmm. Um I gave it on my cageometer, I gave it a four. So we kind of equal out to four. And that's, you know, like you guys were saying, like he's kind of, I mean, the movie itself is is a poor version of the 73 version, even though the 73 mm-hmm. version isn't that great of a movie. You took a great movie or a, a not so great movie and made it even worse and made it more <laughs> ridiculous and made it make less sense because like the virgin sacrifice thing made a lot of sense in the first one mm-hmm. for pagan idolatry and stuff. But the fucking just over elaborate, like, let's go get a guy and have sex with him. And then 10 years from now, we'll like bait him into coming to the island, then play a game with him for the whole, you know, time for three days while we get ready for the Wicker Man to be finished. And part of it, I wonder (laughs) if maybe that's what it was. It's like they're just playing games with him because the Wicker Man's not done. Obviously, it's not (laughs) done because those guys are still holding it. Yeah, but they had a timetable, yeah. and maybe because they didn't know when he was going to show up. So yeah, that, was, that could. But be also, it. I feel like uh, by pagan standards, they would have to sacrifice him on the solstice, right? Mm-hmm. Isn't that a thing? Probably. I mean, I would assume something like that. But then I'll, that also leads to like, okay, if he didn't show up at that time, if, or if he was right. just like, well, fuck that bitch, she ran out on me. <laughs> I mean, what what was their backup plan? Was it pimply maybe Joe? They actually burn the girl. <laughs> yeah, maybe they yeah, burn maybe. the girl. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that's what Pimply Joe is. He's the backup, and he's just he's already he's been he's been pre crippled and pre stung by the bees, and he's just hanging out in the bed in case they need him. Yeah, maybe they put the cage thing over his head and stung yeah. him, and his eye swole up and broke his legs, and now he's bedridden, and they're yeah. just keeping him there. Maybe, maybe that actually would be an explanation for why that, that fucking thing that, is in that shot that, is in the movie. That makes the most sense out of why the hell that guy was in the movie in the first place, aside from being creepy. <laughs> Mm-hmm. All right, so our still doesn't final explain the naked for... chick covered in bees. Yeah, yeah that <laughs> nothing explains that. <laughs> Just to be weird, like you said, yeah. it was a, probably an homage to The Shining. Sh- I did hear that the uh, it was either the writer or no, the uh, I think it was the cinematographer made a few overt Shining references. Like there's a two three seven in the movie, and then I guess that whole sequence mm-hmm. was kind of like him running in on the guy getting the blowjob in a dog costume. <laughs> <laughs> so our final tally on the cageometer for the wicker man 2006 version is four out of ten 